Good morning students. You are watching physics class from Bethlehem Metric Higher Secondary School. In physics, we have completed the unit 1, Nature of Physical World and Measurement. Today, I am going to start the second unit, Kinematics. This is the most important unit in physics. In the first lesson, you have learned branches of physics. The main branches are classical physics and modern physics. Classical physics and modern physics. The classical physics has mechanics, thermodynamics, optics, etc. What is meant by mechanics? Mechanics is the study of forces acting on the object, whether it is rest or motion. Mechanics again classified into two, statics and dynamics. Statics and dynamics. Statics deals with the object such rest. Statics deals with the object test rest. Dynamics deals with the object in motion. Dynamics again classified into two kinematics and kinetics. Kinematics and kinetics. Kinematics. Kinematics deals with the motion of objects without taking forces into account. But kinetic deals with the motion of objects with taking forces into account. Anyway, the central aspects in physics is motion. Nothing is at rest. Because earth is revolving around the sun. So central aspect in physics is motion. The entire universe is governed by various types of motion. So motion is found at all levels. From microscopic level that is within the atom to a macroscopic level that is planetary systems. And here the study of various types of motion is expressed using the language of mathematics. So mathematics is necessary to understand the concept of physics. In this unit the basic mathematics needed for analyzing the motion in terms of direction and magnitude is covered. Kinematics the word is derived from Greek word kinema, which means motion. The word is derived from Greek word kinema, which means motion. Kinematics is the branch of mechanics which deals with the motion of objects without taking force into account. What is kinematics? Kinematics is the branch of mechanics which deals with the motion of objects without taking forces into account. Next, concept of rest and motion. What is rest and what is motion? You all know that, isn't it? Rest, the position of an object does not change with respect to time. Motion, the position of an object changes with respect to time. Lower classes we have learned. But in this higher classes, you need to understand the next level of rest and motion. 
For example, consider this notebook. Now, this notebook is at rest. Isn't it? Consider this pencil. This pencil is also now at rest. Is it really at rest? No. Because I am holding this pencil. I am standing on the surface of the earth. The earth is revolving around the sun. So, the earth is moving. Obviously, we are also moving. So, now the pencil is not at rest. Pencil is also moving. Isn't it? Consider another example. Suppose you are traveling in a bus. You and your fellow passengers are at rest with respect to the bus. Isn't it? You are sitting in the bus. So you are at rest with respect to the moving bus. And the fellow passengers also rest with respect to the moving bus. But when your friend is watching the moving bus from outside, according to him, are you being in the state of rest or motion? According to your friend, you are in motion. According to the moving bus, you are in rest. But according to your friend, you are in motion. So which one is true? Both are true. Isn't it? So the concept of rest and motion have meaning only with respect to some reference frame. Reference of the bus, you are at rest. With the reference of your friend, you are in motion. So concepts of rest and motion have meaning only with respect to some reference frame. To understand rest or motion, we need a convenient fixed frame of reference. What is meant by frame of reference? Frame of reference, it is nothing but coordinate system in mathematics. Mathematics we will call it as coordinate system. In physics we will call it as frame of reference. Just a x, y and z axis. These axes are called coordinate axis. So what is when we frame of reference? If we imagine a coordinate system and the position of an object is described relative to it. And such a coordinate system is called a frame of reference. What is frame of reference? If we imagine a coordinate system and the position of an object is described relative to it, then such a coordinate system is called a frame of reference. What do you mean by coordinate system? Arrangement of reference lines or curves used to identify the location of points in space. Arrangement of reference lines or curves used to identify the location of points in space. Nothing but x, y, z axis are called the coordinate axis to identify the position of an object. So in physics we will call it as a frame of reference. Cartesian coordinate system. At any given instant of time, the frame of reference with respect to which the position of the object is described in terms of x, y, z is called Cartesian coordinate system. So the position coordinate systems are called Cartesian coordinate system. For example, let us see this. This is x axis. This is y axis and this is z axis. X, y, z. An object is here. The position of an object we can consider as x, y, z. So this 
object has the distance of x x distance from the origin and y distance and z distance this is the position of this object x y z so this is known as the y coordinate this is the x coordinate and this is the z coordinate so by describing this position coordinates we can call this position coordinates a cartesian coordinate system here x y z are considered in anti clockwise direction so this is anti clockwise direction this is anti clockwise direction and this is clockwise direction so this is considered as anti clockwise direction so we can call this coordinate system as right handed cartesian coordinate system if x y z axis are drawn in the anti clockwise direction then the coordinate system is called as right handed cartesian coordinate system in physics we are conveniently following this right handed coordinate system right handed in the sense when you are place your fingers in the x direction this is the x direction and rotate the fingers towards the y axis this is x and rotate the fingers towards the y axis this thumb finger shows the z axis so place your fingers in the direction of positive x axis and rotate them towards the y axis and your thumb will point in the direction of positive z axis similarly the left hand coordinate system is also there but we are conveniently following the right hand coordinate system the following figures shows the difference between left and right hand coordinate system look at this this is x this is y and this is z the coordinate axis are in anti clockwise direction and this is right handed z up when you are rotating the fingers this x axis means the y will go in the inner side and z is the thumb so here this is known as right handed z up similarly y if it is in the up direction the coordinate axis are x y z so this is known as right handed y up look at this here this is x this is y and this is z so this is in the clockwise direction so clockwise direction in the sense left handed so this is left hand this is x if you are rotating this in the figure y direction the thumb shows the z direction so this is clockwise and we can call this as left handed z up similarly suppose this is x and this is y and this is z means this is known as left handed y up so we have seen what is mean by kinematics concept of rest and motion frame of reference and cartesian coordinate system next another one concept point mass to explain the motion of an object a point mass is required what is mean by point mass actually the bigger objects can be treated as a small point in which the mass of an object assumed to be concentrated if the distance covered by the object is greater than the size of the object then the object be assumed as point mass when we are considering a train 
traveling with a particular velocity it travels from one point to the other point suppose thousand kilometers it may complete it then instead of the train we can consider the train as a point object or point mass that is compared to a distance covered the size of the train is very small so we can consider the train as a point mass what is meant by point mass if the distance covered by the object is greater than the size of the object then the object be assumed as a point mass actually the point mass has finite mass with zero dimension mathematically we can consider it has finite mass with zero dimension the point mass is a relative term for example motion of air with respect to sun to analyze the motion of air with respect to sun earth can be treated as point mass because distance between the earth and sun is very large compared to the size of the earth so the earth can be treated as a point mass if we throw a stone in the air here also to analyze the motion of the stone we can consider the stone as a point mass because it moves in space so the size of the stone is very much smaller than the distance through which it travels okay so this is about point mass so when we compare the distance covered by the object the size of the object is small means we can consider that as a point mass let us see the next topic types of motion in our day to day life we are observing various types of motion you know the various types of motion so let so here we are discussing four types of motion linear motion circular motion rotational motion and vibratory motion what are they linear motion circular motion rotational motion and vibratory motion these types you have learned in the lower classes very easy what is mean by linear motion say some example linear motion linear motion means moving in a straight line an object is said to be in linear motion if it moves in a straight line tell me some examples yeah an athlete running on a straight track parade of the soldiers bullet targeted from the pistol lot of examples you can see object dropped from certain height so these are the examples of linear motion what is that it moves in a straight line next circular motion what is meant by circular motion the motion described by an object traversing as a circular path the motion described by an object traversing as a circular path give some examples of circular motion yeah merry go round in the amusement park whirling motion of a stone attached to a string the motion of a satellite around the earth moving of a fan blade so these are the examples of circular motion rotational motion if any objects moving in a rotational motion about an axis the motion is called rotation if any objects moving in a rotational motion about an axis the motion is called rotation so during rotation every point the object transverses a circular about an 
axis. Give some examples of rotational motion. Spinning of earth about its own axis. Windmill. Car steering. Motion of a ball at the top of the finger. The spinner what you are playing. That is also examples of rotational motion. Rotation of a disc about an axis through its center. What is the difference between rotational motion and circular motion? In the rotational motion, this is an axis. About an axis, the object is moving. So the axis of rotation is passing through the object. In rotational motion, the axis of rotation is passing through the object. But in circular motion, consider this picture. Suppose this is an axis means this axis of rotation is not passing through the object. Rotational motion, axis of rotation is passing through the object. But circular motion, the axis of rotation is not passing through the object. This is the main difference between circular motion and the rotational motion. Next, vibratory motion. What is meant by vibratory motion? If an object or particle executes a to and fro motion about a fixed point, it is said to be in vibratory motion. If an object or particle executes a to and fro motion about a fixed point, it is said to be in vibratory motion. Example, movement of a swing to and fro motion. Vibration of a string on a guitar. And also the phone ringtone. When the phone gets vibrates, that motion called as vibratory motion. So linear motion, circular motion, rotational motion and vibratory motions we have seen. Other types of motions also there. Elliptical motion, helical motion etc. The next one is motion in 1, 2 and 3 dimensions. Motion in 1, 2 and 3 dimensions. Let the position of a particle be x, y, z. We can consider this as a Cartesian coordinate system or we can consider this as a rectangular coordinates also. When these coordinates changes with the time, then the particle is said to be in motion. But it is not necessary all the three coordinates should together change with the time. Even if one or two coordinate changes with the time, the particle is said to be in motion. So we have the following classifications. Motion in one dimension. The is called as rectilinear motion or linear motion. One dimensional motion is the motion of a particle moving along a straight line. One dimensional motion is the motion of a particle moving along a straight line. Here, only one of the three coordinates. Only one of the three rectangular coordinates changes with the time. Example, motion of a car along a straight railway track. Motion of a train along a straight railway track or we can consider car moves from one point to other point in the same direction. An object falling freely under gravity close to earth. So when the car is moving this position to this position, only one of the coordinates gets varied. Let's consider this x coordinate alone gets varied. Here the y coordinate and the z coordinates are not changed. It is moving in a straight line. An object freely falling under gravity. So an object is falling means only this coordinate has changed, y coordinate. The other coordinates does not change. So these motions are known as motion in 
one dimension. Next, motion in two dimension. Obviously, it requires two of the three coordinate changes with the time. If a particle is moving along a curved path in a plane, then it is said to be in two dimensional motion. If a particle is moving along a curved path in a plane, then it is said to be in two dimensional motion. That is, if the particle is moving in a plane, moving in a plane, we can consider this as a motion in two dimension. Here actually, two of the three coordinate changes with the time. See this picture, this is y coordinate and this is z coordinate. Initially, the position of the particle is here, p1, y1, comma z1. Now, this particle can move anywhere in this area. Suppose this is the position of the particle after a particular time. Here, the y coordinate varies as well as z coordinates also vary. So, two of the coordinates varies. Okay. So, now this motion is said to be motion in two dimension. The best example is motion of a coin on a carom board. Okay. Also, insects crawling over the floor of a room. So, it has one, this direction as well as this direction. Either y or z. So, in this plane, anywhere the object can move. The next one, motion in three dimension. So, a particle moving in usual three dimensional space has three dimensional motion. That means all the three coordinates change with respect to time. All the three coordinates change with respect to time. Tell me the best example, a bird flying in the sky. So in the sky, all three coordinates get varies. From the top, from the height, all the three axes, the bird can change its position. There is random motion of a gas molecule. If a gas is uh, filled in a container, in that container, the gas molecules can move randomly. So, both X, Y as well as Z coordinates also gets weight. Flying of a kite on a windy day. So, everything that moves in a three-dimensional space has three-dimensional motion. So today we have seen the second unit introduction, kinematics. So what is mean by kinematics? Kinematic system, branch of mechanics which deals with the motion of objects without taking force into account. The word is derived from the Greek word kinema which means motion. Then we have discussed about concept of rest and motion. And we learned about the frame of reference. Mathematically, we can call it as coordinate system. In physics, we can call it as frame of reference. So, what is meant by frame of reference? If we imagine a coordinate system and the position of an object is described related to it, then such a coordinate system is called a frame of reference. Then we have discussed about point mass. And types of motion, linear motion, circular motion, rotational motion, vibratory motion and at last motion in one dimension, two dimension and three dimensions. So students learn these questions, what is kinematics, what is frame of reference, explain what is mean by Cartesian coordinate system and discuss the types of motion. Learn well students, thank you.